Good afternoon. Um, I hope everyone's had a good lunch before we start discussing uh, food. Um, my name's Oliver Cumming. As, as Sanji said, I'm from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, um, and I'm with the, the SHARE Research uh, Consortium, uh, which is a £10 million research programme exclusively focused on, on sanitation and hygiene uh, and combines uh, the London School, uh, the International Centre for Diarrheal Disease Research, Bangladesh, uh, WaterAid, uh, the International Institute for Environment uh, and Development, as well as Slum Dwellers International. Um, I've, I've been asked in 10 minutes to give uh, an overview of wash, wash and undernutrition, um, which, is, we, which is a challenge. Um, luckily, Robert's also going to uh, present after me and hopefully be able to pick up some of the things that I have to, um, just due to time, brush, brush over. Um, I'm going to give you some background. I'm going to run through the evidence on the basis of an ongoing systematic review that the London School is doing in this area. I'm going to talk a little bit about disparities and equity, which is a, uh, a sort of constant theme in the, in the WASH sector. And I think uh, nutrition has uh, there's some very important aspects relating to undernutrition in children. And then finally, I was asked to give a few thoughts on the implications for policy, but this is really, I think, just a drum roll for the, uh, the later presentations, which we're going to talk more specifically about attempts to bridge the WASH uh, uh, nutrition divide. Um, so, under nutrition, where, where are we talking about? Um, predominantly Sub-Saharan Africa and, and South Asia. Uh, this is a map um, showing the prevalence of, uh, of stunting. Um, so, the countries in red are uh, have a prevalence of stunting more than two standard deviations um, uh, of greater than 40 40%. Um, so highly concentrated in, in sub-Saharan Africa um, and South Asia, but also extending across the, the Pacific. I'm sure many of you who are used to looking at sort of beautiful maps created by the JMP will sort of recognise a sort of remarkable similarity in the distribution uh, of, of countries. Um, just some sort of headlines, and this is, I mean, this is based on, you know, on work over the last, the last decade, um, particularly the work of, of, of Bob Black and the Child Health Epidemiological uh, Review Group in the Lancet series in, in 2008. Uh, but it's estimated that undernutrition causes over 2 million uh, deaths each year and accounts for 21% of the global disease burden uh, for children younger than five years, which is an absolutely huge uh, share of, uh, of, of disease burden. By comparison, WHO estimated that, uh, that WASH accounts for so water, sanitation, hygiene, including water resources, accounted for 9%. nine um, we know that 30% of, of children in low-income countries are chronically undernourished. Um, and we know that diarrhoea causes undernutrition. But we also know that it reduces a child's resistance to subsequent infections, which can create a vicious uh, cycle. And this is something that's sometimes brushed over, but yes, diarrhea can cause um, malnutrition, but malnutrition can cause uh, diarrhea. Further evidence suggests that sustained exposure to excreta-related pathogens, um, and that's including helminths, soil-transmitted soil uh, intestinal worms, uh, which we'll go into a little bit later on, but I know Robert's going to pick up on, um, uh, sort of affects malnutrition and also um, affects cognitive development and um, immunity. I want to just, this is, this is a this is a slide which I've um, plagiarised, stolen from um, a good colleague, a good friend, Jean Humphrey, um, who some of you will, will know. And it shows growth faltering um, in, uh, in three regions against the global uh, norm. So the line, the line you can see in the, in, in the middle is the, uh, is, is, is the global, global norm. The black line is for uh, the Americas region, so Latin America as well as North America. Um, the, the green line is, is uh, Southeast and South Asia, and the, the orange line, um, Africa. The key point here is that in terms of stunting, that separation, that, that uh, in, 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 in linear growth, occurs before the age of two. And this is really critical in terms of thinking about vulnerable populations, but also in thinking about what, what interventions are required to protect vulnerable children from this exposure. So you see that 
sort of big separation from the Latin American line and way off from the uh, from the from the norm uh, line occurring. And most most worrying is that that line then doesn't rise again. It's uh, irreversible, although there is some some debate in the literature um, about this. So. The damage which is done before the age of two is damage which is done for life and goes on to predict a whole range of um, uh, uh, sort of health and other outcomes for children. The Jean Humphrey, um, well, she didn't lead, but she contributed to a, a systematic review of food-based programs uh, in, in Africa. And it was a, you know, a very comprehensive and rigorous review. And they found 42 uh, studies for food-based interventions to tackle uh, undernutrition. And the very best result that was achieved by food-based uh, programs to tackle undernutrition was a 0.7 improvement in the, in the Z-score. Now, the average growth deficit for Africa, and indeed Asia, as we saw, is 2. So that means that the best programs in the, in the rigorous, in the scientific uh, literature were only able to demonstrate a 33% normalization of, of growth. So that means that something else is going on. Uh, and there are a number of compelling, well, there's, 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 there's a lot, there's compelling evidence and some compelling hypotheses that a large part of that 66% is explained by environmental factors, water and sanitation in particular. Um, so the SHARE program decided to undertake a systematic review just to look at the state of the evidence connecting uh, wash interventions to childhood undernutrition, uh, to evaluate the strength of the evidence on those interventions, um, and to identify current research uh, gaps. Um, and it was actually led by my, my colleague at the London School, Alan, Alan Dangor. Um, it's a Cochrane review, which is you know, the gold standard in terms of systematic uh, reviews the protocol uh, is reviewed it's online um, and there is a, there is now a full sort of draft manuscript what I'm showing you is is preliminary uh, findings but just to state the hypothesis there is evidence out there that wash interventions impact uh, on uh, under nutrition um, we know that uh, diseases such as diarrhea tropical or environmental enteropathy which um, Tilo talked about, and also nematodes, sort of intestinal worm infections, have negative effects on nutritional status. Um, and we know that wash interventions could be associated with improved measures of nutrition. We also know that there are multiple indirect pathways, which I'm not going to talk about here, but which really need to be on the table when we think about policy level dialogue and policy coherence with colleagues in nutrition and food security. Um, and just to state some obvious examples, the time taken to collect uh, water, the cost of purchasing uh, water, which is often neglected in the, in the literature, which diverts um, scarce income from, from food, um, and also con chemical contamination of, of water, so sort of non-infectious causes. The conceptual framework, I'm going I'm to zip through this because it's, it's a bit complex. The key, key thing is that we were focused on these three pathways uh, pathways, intestinal worms, environmental enteropathy, so sort of subclinical gut damage associated with faecal ingestion, particularly among young children, and repeated bouts of diarrhea. Um, we know that sanitation uh, uh, influences those in terms of faecal contamination of the home and contaminated uh, material that's ingested. Um, we know that poor hand washing, again, contributes to both of those. But then we think about some of the other factors that come into play, so poor water quality um, in terms of drinking water, but also preparation of weaning food for children uh, related to unprotected water sources. Um, the water sources are far from home, which requires um, expenditure of, of energy, but also reduces the likelihood of uh, safe water in the household, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to spend too long on this. Um, Uh, pains to emphasise these three three pathways. I'm going to read them out again, but there they there they are. The methods for a systematic review. Uh, we considered um, the, the key anthropometric outcomes: weight for height, so wasting; weight for age, so underweight; height for age, stunting. We looked at secondary outcomes. 
um, anthropometric measures, um, some of the biomarkers that are now used for, for conditions like environmental enteropathy. And we, can, we reviewed six databases. Um, this is basically about the, the, the quality uh, criteria. I'm going to hang around too much on that. The preliminary results, um, although we found there is evidence out there, there was a consistent, more or less a consistently protective effect. There are very few high quality uh, studies. Most studies, according uh, by, by the Cochrane criteria, are ranked as very poor, poor quality. Only one randomized control trial, um, uh, as defined by Cochrane, um, was, was found, which is a water treatment, did find a median, um, median increase of um, uh, 0.8 centimetres, which is very significant for under five um, stunting. The other studies we, uh, were generally of very low, low quality. But in doing the systematic review, and indeed just, just through sort of talking to colleagues, there are a number of important studies underway that are going to really shed light on this. And I think for everybody in this room, you need to be aware that these studies are going on and what evidence they're going to contribute to this, to this issue. So uh, a large randomized control trial in ERISA will collect data on, on Z-scores. Um, uh, studies in, in, uh, led by Steve Luby in, in Bangladesh will Z-scores, um, uh, uh, upper arm circumference, and also environmental enteropathy markers. And then finally, Gene Humphrey's uh, sort of large uh, $20 million trial in Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwe will look at all of this. And very interestingly, from a study design perspective, she actually has, it's a factorial design, so she's able um, to discern the effect of sanitation alone, the effect of sanitation plus food, um, and the versus uh, a control group. So we'll begin to understand what's the marginal contribution of, uh, of sanitation in addition to uh, food, food programs. The last thing I want to talk about is disparities. I'm sure all of you are familiar with this. You know, this is a great, great uh, uh, graphics produced by UNICEF which show um, disparities in socioeconomic um, status. I want to just flag this because Disparities in, in access uh, are, uh, are, are important because they, they, they often tell us, uh, they, they tell us about disparities in risk. So um, we've been doing some work recently on sanitation to try and understand who is most exposed to the risk associated with, with sanitation. One of the key determinants there is undernutrition. We know from the literature that if a child is undernourished, the likelihood of that child um, becoming infected with uh, diarrhea and indeed other diseases and the likelihood of mortality is significantly increased. So those, those undernourished children, it's vitally important that WASH programs reach those children because they stand to benefit the most from the, prote the uh, environmental protection afforded by, by sanitation. <clears throat> and what, is, what does that mean? It means that possibly you need to go to different, different populations or within your wide targeting, you maybe need to think again about who is, who is really most at risk. The, you won't be able to apologise, a bit small, but this is a map of, uh, of Kenya. And if you see the, if you see the map right at the, right at the top in colour, ignore the ones on, 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 the, on your right-hand side, so the left one with the heat map. Um, that's, that's a composite measure of susceptibility, which is heavily influenced by undernutrition. So that tells you, if you're concerned with undernutrition, where do you need to spend money on sanitation? And it would lead your investments way up into the north of, uh, of Kenya. The second map shows you if you're concerned with getting your sanitation to where, child, where, uh, where, the, where, there are how, where you have the greatest concentration of um, houses without toilets and houses within areas where there are low levels of, uh, of toilets, your neighbours don't have toilets, that would create a map in the middle, the expo the, what's called the exposure index. It would take you to slightly different areas. Of it. So every instance there by kind of peri-urban. If you combine those two, so you say, what we're concerned about here is the risk that is attached to not having a toilet, but we also know that there is a risk if you don't, if, you, if you're undernourished, that if you get diarrhea, you're more likely to die. If you combine that to sort of build up uh, a, a, sort of, uh, uh, a sort of more complex characterization of risk, you come up with a slightly different map which begins to highlight where you need to spend your money if you want the biggest bang for buck in terms of um, uh, disease burden. The, 
the, the big question in, in, in public health is if preventable, why not prevented? This was a, this was a question by, uh, uh, sort of thrown at the public health community in Britain in 1891. Um, this was a time when, when Britain had a Prince of Wales who said useful uh, uh, things. <laughs> I'm not going to answer that, that question, but what we... What I'm going to do is uh, give you a few reflections, but I think the presentations that will come will talk a little bit more about what we do about making the preventive, preventable preventive. Um, first of all, there's new research. The evidence base is strengthening, but we do need more research. Um, secondly, I think we can say with relative confidence that undernutrition increases both the risk of infection and the risk of death, and that's extremely important. Thirdly, if we're going to do something about this, it will require integration of interventions. It's going to require food. It's also going to require access to, to health care, which we haven't talked about uh, so much, because kids will still get diarrhea and kids will still need oral rehydration uh, therapy. And then finally, of course, it will, we are going to have to do something about the, about the environment. Um, different exposures may mean different interventions. The pathways which explain why WASH affects undernutrition are not necessarily the same as the pathways which explain why uh, poor WASH results in diarrhoea. We need to be aware of that. And I think one, 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 one particular exposure that is under neglected at the moment, and if we're concerned with, with stunting, needs to be firmly uh, in, in the centre of our agenda, is weaning, weaning food. Levels of contamination of weaning food are shockingly high and in, certainly in the studies that we've conducted far higher than levels of contamination in, in drinking water and it's particularly uh, worrying because that's uh, uh, a time when the child is so at risk because it's coming off the breast sort of exposed to the, to the environment. Um, we need to rethink the, the investment case for water and sanitation. This is about revaluing both, both the costs and the consequences. A lot of the debate about reaching vulnerable or remote communities has been based on uh, uh, revaluation of the costs. We know these remote communities are hard to reach. What we don't always do is revalue the consequences. If we are to reach those vulnerable populations, which may cost more money, the benefits are, uh, are potentially much, much greater. Um, we talked a bit about policy coherence. I think other people are going to pick, uh, pick this up. It's another reason, just finally, to consider disparities in equity and non-discrimination. However you want to approach this angle, risk is not distributed equally in populations. And we have the information to do better to reach the most vulnerable, the people who would most benefit from the interventions that we're, that we're investing in. Um, and then a concluding footnote. Bald men uh, have very few uh, hair options. Um, uh, I won't sort of point, point anybody out. Um, but this is Edwin, Edwin Chadwick, who's a, a sort of brave hairstyler. He's a bald man who, who decided not to shave his head. He's gone for something uh, completely, completely different. I put him up there because uh, in, in, in 18... Some of you may, you know, may be familiar with a public health uh, reforming, uh, reformer from the Victorian uh, age. But... Um, Interesting, when he first made the case, when he was advocating for sanitation, he did so on the basis of getting nutrition to the urban poor. He wanted to get waste out of cities um, uh, to improve agricultural um, productivity, to get food back into the cities, to get the productive classes um, uh, um, uh, contributing to the economy. And then the other last one is... The, what's called the mills reinecke uh, phenomenon. There's a great paper in The Lancet from 1901 by McNutt on this. But uh, these are two public health engineers that independently identified, one in America and one in Austria at the end of the 19th century, that when uh, improved water and sanitation was put in place, surprising fact that the reduction in child mortality accompanying improvements in water supply was greater than what could be accounted for in the fall in mortality uh, caused by enteric and waterborne diseases. And they found that to a factor of one to three. So the lesson is it's not just diarrhea. Something, there is potentially a much bigger win here in terms of sorting out the environment and getting sort of safe drinking water and sanitation to uh, vulnerable people. Thank you.